If you've ever looked into cosmetic procedures, you know there are just so many options out there. And what do you choose to help make a great decision? Here's a look into the world of plastic surgery with insider Dr. John Martin. Take a look. We have a list of what dermal fillers uh, can do from the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, and they can do a lot. I was actually surprised to see this yesterday when I saw the topic. Plump lips. You see a lot of that in Miami. <laughs> 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 maybe, a little, maybe a little too plump a lot of times. That's another hour of another show. Exactly. Enhance uh, shallow contours. That would be in what area? Right. For contours, uh, some people, you want to fill up the cheeks to pull up, help with the nasal labial fold. Some people put it directly into the nasal labial fold. You can fill the outer cheek, which will help pull up the cheeks. You can enhance the jawline. So there are a lot of areas on the face that you can fill. Another big area now is what we call tear troughs, this dark area that people get. And by putting some volume in there, it helps decrease the appearance of the uh, dark circles. All right. Obviously, it softens facial creases and wrinkles, improves appearance of uh, received scars. Look at that. Right. So if you have some acne scars or scars from anything, if you put some underneath it, you can lift that scar, help break up the scar tissue underneath, and it'll really just help the skin look uh, softer and smoother. All right. And you hit the last one as, as well. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between fillers and Botox? Because okay. I think... People get them confused. People get them right? very confused. I would think they're the same, but they're not. They're not the same. Okay. Because fillers is, is a gel that you inject underneath the skin to fill in an area, whereas Botox or any of the botulinum toxins, what they're going to do, they're a paralytic agent. So they're for dynamic wrinkles. So for example, the frown lines, if you put some botulinum toxin up here, it's going to paralyze these muscles, just decrease their action so it'll decrease the appearance of the wrinkles. But it only lasts for about three or four months. Now the fillers can last anywhere from six months to several years, depending on the area. Oh, wow. For example, in the tear trough, there, there isn't a lot of movement there. So we've seen that last for even six to eight years at times in some people. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, yeah. what's, I guess, the benefit of doing injections versus surgery, obviously one of them is non-invasive, so that's right. one check. Correct. What's another one? Well, the Less other, permanent? Well, it's less permanent. The other thing about the good fillers is you can dissolve them. So let's say you put in a filler and you say, you know, I don't really like the way that looks. There's an enzyme we can inject, dissolves it within about 20 minutes. Oh. The other... <laughs> like Shazam. Shazam. Goodbye. Boom. Yeah. Let's try again. Yeah. And the other thing... <laughs> Let's just, talk, since I'm an you know, oculoplastics, let's say someone has dark circles. Doing surgery may not do anything for that patient, whereas the fillers may really produce a nice change. Or if someone has some, an area that they need some volume, surgery may not help as much as a filler. So for a lot of people, fillers are a much better option. All right. I'd like to take a quick moment to remind our viewers, if you'd like to give us a, a call and you have a question for Dr. Martin, there's the phone number. Super easy, 855-796-4475. So today we're going to be focusing on when fillers have gone bad and some of the risks. But, you know, I love doing this and I, you know, I love Trivial Pursuit and I love history. So <laughs> let's talk about just when did this all begin, this filler uh, fascination. I'm doing alliteration here. Okay. Well, <laughs> fillers really started, you know, 100 years ago. And the first fillers were actually paraffin, wax. Wax? Wax. So those were the first fillers. But obviously they didn't work very well because <laughs> with your body temperature, the wax would melt. But that was what they first started trying. But it's a good idea. I it's can good see idea. the logic behind exactly. it. Exactly. And then um, you could do fillers from other parts of the body. Take some fat from one place, put it into another. And we still do a lot of fat fillers. It's only been in about the last 15 to 20 years that we started to use something called hyaluronic acid. And that's a filler that that substance is actually in your body. It's in your skin. It's in your joints. So they've taken it, made it into a gel, and that's the one that we use the most. Uh, that's the safest one that you can inject. You can't really be allergic to it. Some people may get some swelling, but that's the one that you can also dissolve out. There are also now some more permanent fillers, higher risk anytime you use a permanent filler because they're harder to, to take them out. You really have to excise them. So uh, we try to stick more to the high hyaluronic acid fillers because they're safer and you can uh, dissolve them. Now, silicone injection, silicone is legal to use inside the eye after, if you have, let's say, a retinal detachment. But people have used it in an off-label fashion, which means you can take a micro droplet of silicone, let's say, and fill in a scar. And if you use a medical grade silicone and you do it correctly, you'll probably be okay. okay. The big issue is people have gone another step further and said, well, if the silicone works, let me get some silicone from somewhere else. It's a non-medical grade silicone loaded with impurities, but they're putting large volumes, even up to, let's say, a half a liter for breasts or, 
you know, a quarter, you know, just way too much in the face, and then it, it creates a, a myriad of problems. And uh, when it comes to determining who is a candidate for dermal fillers, uh, I do want to let our viewers know that the American Academy of Plastic Surgeon has the following guidelines. So here are some guidelines in case you're thinking of doing some fillers. Be physically healthy, that's paramount. <laughs> that goes without saying, right? right? Don't smoke. What's the importance? Why? Well, the smoking will create a certain amount of lines and wrinkles. It also decreases blood flow to the face. And it's just not a healthy lifestyle. So it's sort of like getting, you know, if you're tan and sunburned all the time when you come in for, for work, you really need to change your lifestyle. And so smoking is just bad for your skin. And even the fillers probably are not going to last as long because you have decreased blood flow to the face. All right. Obviously, have a positive outlook. Have realistic goals in mind. How many people come in, doctor, and just say, I, <laughs> <laughs> I want this, 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 and you kind of go, wait, whoa. Yeah, exactly. People come in and I'm like, okay, 10 tubes of filler later, you might look better. I want to look like Jennifer Aniston. Right. Some whoa. people, you really need realistic expectations with anything that you do in, in plastic surgery. But with fillers, you can definitely create some nice changes. But some people, may they may be beyond the stage of fillers. And then you just have to say to them, it's not going to work. It's a waste of your money. All right. I do want to cover quickly uh, Sculptra. I heard about that one. What's that? Sculptra is one of the uh, fillers that we can inject. And it's more of, it creates a scaffolding for you to create your own collagen. So it's for people who have overall loss of volume in their face, and you can do a filler, the Sculptra. And we usually will do two or three injections like every month to four <coughs> to six weeks. And what that does, the scaffolding of this product you create new collagen around it, so you form your own collagen. So it's different than the other fillers that just are a volume replacement. And let's talk about collagen for, I mean, we all know what collagen is. I see babies that I'm like, look at all that collagen <laughs> when I see their cheeks. Uh, why is it good for us? And of, co of course, we're replenishing our bodies with it because we're losing it. We lose the collagen. And you, especially smoking will help get rid of your collagen. Uh, Sun, uh, sun exposure will help decrease your collagen. So what you want to do is produce more collagen. So that's how this works. Now, taking collagen by mouth or putting on a collagen cream is not going to produce, make you produce more collagen. Lasers, the heat of a laser will make you stimulate more collagen so you get more collagen production. And then things like the Sculptor and will make you produce more collagen. All right. And I just celebrated a birthday and I saw in the last year of my life that I lost more collagen. So there we go. <laughs> 32, <laughs> once again. That's oh, I love you, doctor. <laughs> Truly some great information, and you can hear more from Dr. Martin by downloading the Health Channel app. That does it for us today. Visit our website, allhealthtv.com. Send in your questions and stories. We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, whichever one you like best, at All Health TV. Thanks for watching the Health Insiders on the Health Channel. I'm Olga Villaverde, soon to be getting Botox, fillers, you name it, I'm game. We'll see you next time. <laughs>